Hello everybody and welcome to my C++ gravity tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how you can create a basic gravity function in C++ using SFML graphics library. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is let's create a player class. So create a header file and then call this player. And then we're going to say our class called player and then do our public modifiers. Oops public modifiers and our private modifiers and then we also want to pound include io stream and then pound include the sfml graphics library whoops there we go graphics.hpp then we're going to just make this guy an sf rectangle shape called player then on our constructor we'll take in a vector to float called size and then we'll say player dot set size to whatever is passed in for size and then we'll also player dot set fill color to color green because our player is a good guy green then we just want to do our <coughs> void draw to and then we want to pass in an sf uh, Oops, not vector. An SF render window, get that by reference so it modifies the actual window. And then we call that window, and then we'll window.draw our player. And then we will say uh, void move, and then let's take an SF vector to float called distance, and then we'll just play, oops, player dot move our distance. Man, I cannot spell today. And then we'll do a set position, take in an SF vector to float called new position, and then we'll just player dot set position to equal our new position. Set position, oops, new position, just like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then we can say, oh wait, we have to include our player class, so pound include player, and then we'll say player player we'll make him about 40 by 40 and then we'll say player dot set position to about 700 by oops that's x 50 by 700 I've been mi mixing up x and y a lot lately I don't really know why so then lastly we'll just say player dot draw to our window so let's just see how that looks okay player down there Let's add our movement events. So we want to put that down here. So we'll say if SF keyboard is key pressed, SF keyboard, we'll use the arrow keys for this, up. So if they're going to go up, we actually want to go up here and we're going to create our uh, gravity variables now that I'm getting into keyboards. So for our gravity variables, go ahead and say gravity variables. So what we want for our gravity variable, the first thing we want is a ground height. So that's where the uh, the ground is going to be. So that's where the player is going to stop, and it's going to be a position on the x-axis. So we're going to say a constant int called ground height, and you usually want to make this um, whatever the player y is set to originally. So we're going to set this equal to 700, and then we also want to create a constant float called gravity speed and we'll set that equal to 0 0.3 and then lastly we want to create a boolean called is jumping equal to false by default and then we're actually going to go in here and we're just going to create a constant float called move speed set that equal to 0 0.2 and then under the up event we want to player dot move we want to move it at 0 negative move speed because negative moves it up and then we also want to say is jumping equal to true so now that it's set to true whenever they let go of the key they want to stop jumping so we have to do a key release event so we're going to do that down here so we're going to say case sf events key released colon and then here we're just going to set is jumping equal to false so this so if they are holding down the up key then jumping is going to be true but if they are not then it'll be false just like that then let's just create the rest of these so we can just copy this type in else if for down we just want to get rid of the negative and then let's also get rid of that and then we'll copy this again for our rights actually we actually don't want it down because we don't want them to be able to move down so we'll just do right 
and then right is just move speed, and then left, that will just be negative move speed. So now, let's run this, see we can move right, left, and up, but we don't fall. So now what we're going, oops, um, what we want to do for our gravity is we want to go down here and we'll just call this gravity logic. And we'll say if our player, and actually we have to go into our player class and I have to do an int get x, so this will, or no, get y, sorry, we want to get the y. This will return player dot get position dot y. We want to get the player's y position, and you'll see why in a minute. And then we'll say if the player dot get y, so if their y position is less than the ground height, so if they are jumping above the ground height, and is jumping is equal to false, so if they are both above the ground and they are not jumping, then we want to say player dot move at zero and then gravity speed. So now if we run this, we can move side to side and we can jump up and then we fall down just like that. And you got yourself a little platformer. So now, let's add some other stuff to our little game here. Let's add a coin system, or a point system, and we'll use coins. So this one, we'll call this coin.h. So we'll create a class called coin, public and private. And then this one is going to pound include IO stream, just in case we need that, and then pound include the SFML graphics library. And then we want to say SF rectangle shape called coin is going to be our private variable. And then under our constructor here, we'll take an SF vector to float called size. And then we'll coin dot set size to size. It's just basically the same thing as for the player. Void draw to SF render window window window. Oops, I cannot spell today. Window dot draw our coin. And then we'll do void, uh, what else? Actually, we don't need move. Actually, we want to create a, uh, see if the player is colliding with the coin. So we can actually um, create an SF float rect called get global bounds. And then this will return coin.get global bounds. So this will return where the coin is, and the get global bounds method has another method, has a sub method called intersect, so we can see if it intersects with it. So we can go back to our player class, and then we can create a boolean called is colliding, colliding with coin, or something like that. And then we want to uh, pound include our coin class here, and then we want to pass in a coin called coin. So if the player is colliding with coin, and then we want to say if player dot get global bounds dot intersect coin dot get global bounds. So if they are intersecting, then we want to return true, and then if they're not, then we want to return false, just like that. And then. I think that's all we would need for this. So we can go in here, we can pound include our coin class, and then we can actually I'll say this is our player object, and then these will be our coin objects. So we'll create a coin called coin1, and then this will be how about about 20 by 20. And actually I want to set the coins coin dot set fill color to SF color yellow by default just to make them look like a coin. Just like that and then we'll also create a coin called coin2 and then this one will also be at 20 by 20. And then we also want to create a standard vector whoops not time back vector of coins this will be called our coin vector and then we want to say coin vec dot push back with coin one, then coin vector dot push back with coin two. So we want to add both of our coins to our vector, 
And then down here, actually first we have to say um, coin one dot draw to our window, and then we want to say coin two dot draw to our window, and we want to also create a method here that will be void set position uh, sf vector to float new position coin dot set position to our new position. And then we want to define our coin position. So we'll say at coin one dot set position to how about x will be 50, y will be about 600. So right about the player. And then we'll do coin two dot set position to 100, 600. It's like that. Did I draw both of them? I did. Okay. So let me just take a look at that. And I got an error. Did I forget a parenthesis somewhere? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. Okay. So, yeah, so the coins, but now if we run into them, nothing happens. So, let's fix that. So, let's, or let's create that. So, this will be our coin logic. So, this is why we created the coin vector. So, and actually, it can't just be a coin vector, it has to be a coin vector of, uh, pointers and then we have to pass in each coin by reference because if we want to actually make it appear that the coin is disappearing after you collect it because you don't want the player to infinitely collect the coin then you have to get the actual reference of the coin because if you just pass in coin it won't actually be able to modify the coin itself but if you pass in the reference to the coin then you can modify the coin itself so we can reset the position we can reset the color or do all these things to make it look like it disappeared and in this case we're going to be resetting the position to give the illusion that it disappeared so we're going to say if uh, player or no, we don't want to start with this. If we say for int i equal to zero, while i is less than our coin vec dot size, then we want i plus plus. Whoop, not not underscore underscore plus plus. And then we'll say if our player dot is colliding with coin coin vec i and that is colliding with coinvec i uh, oh um we should pass in this here and then change this to an arrow Will that work that should work okay yeah so make that a pointer and then change that to an arrow i forgot about that then we want to say um we'll just make the coin disappear for now so we'll say coin vec i set position to be like just some random number so it's definitely outside of the screen okay so now let's run this and then if we hit that it disappears hit that it disappears and we didn't have to do that for each individual one we just did that with one big for loop so now we could add as many coins as we wanted and as long as they were added to the coin vector by reference then we would be able to um, make them disappear and actually I'm also going to implement a scoring system so I'm gonna go down here and I'm also gonna create a uh, score objects so we actually have to include a library for this we have to include s streams and what s streams are they're string streams and they can be appended or erased and string streams is the only thing that I found that the uh, SF text feature could take in as a string object, uh, or that could be modified as a string object without it running into any problems. So, what we're going to do is we want to create an int called score, set that equal to zero. Then we also want to create an SF text called LBL score, label score. And then we'll say LBL score dot set character size to how about 30. We'll say LBL score dot set our um, position to about 10, 10. And also we want to, in order for the score to show up, you have to create a font for it. So I actually, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to show you how to add a font. So you want to go into your project folder, projects, and then the name of it. This one's called game tutorial for me. Then go into this folder. And then you can type in fonts. And then I'm going to type, I'm just going to take Arial. And then you can copy Arial over to here. 
And then that copies all those, and we can just delete these, because we just want this one, and it's .ttf. So then you load in a font the same way that you would load in a texture. So let me just exit out of this. So we can actually go up here and we can create an SF font called Arial. And then, oops, we'll say Arial.load from file Arial.ttf. So this will load in Arial. And then we'll say LBL score dot set string to, oh, whoops, not set string, uh, set font to Arial. And then for the string, what we want to do is we want to create a standard output string stream. We'll call this SS score for string stream score. And then we will say SS score. This is how you take in input to a string stream, the same way you do it to see out. And then er uh, bracket bracket score. And then score, just like that. And since score, a score hasn't been defined. Whoops, I have to define that up here. So this will take in score. And then we will set LBL score dot set our string to an SS score here. Oh, whoops, then you have to say dot str, the str method. Just like that. So this will, oh, then we have to finally just window dot draw our LBL score just like that so now if we run this it should say score in the top left right there and now for our score here we can actually increment it by one and actually we want to do this after it disappears so we'll say a score plus plus so we just want the score to increment by one and then we want to say our SS score will take in score space then our score again, and actually before this we have to say s score dot str. We have to set the string of the s score. We have to reset the string of ss score because if we don't do that, then it'll just keep appending and it'll take up the whole screen. But we don't want it to do that. We just want it to be reset every time, so that way score will just keep replacing it, so it won't look like anything's being reset. But in actuality, it is. And then we finally want to say lbl score dot set string to be SS score, just like that. Whoops dot str, the str method. So now if we go here and then we collect a coin, it goes up by one, collect another coin, it goes up by one. All right, so everything seems to work with our little 2D game. We don't really have, that's really not that much of a challenge, you just gotta collect coins. But you could take this and you could make it into a whole game if you really wanted to. And if not, you could just take this knowledge. And anyways, if you like this video, please give it a like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.